This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to answer the question, is Bitcoin Core compromised? What is going on over there? Here's the situation. A lot of Bitcoin mining pools are choosing to mine a lot of spam. And a lot of Bitcoiners like you and I who run Bitcoin nodes don't like the spam because we just want to use Bitcoin as money. Yes, we're weird that way. Bitcoin node runners don't get paid to store the spam. Bitcoin node runners don't get paid to relay the spam. It's all downside and it's no upside for us node runners. And the only people making money from the spam are crypto VCs like David Bailey, malicious mining pools like Mara, companies like Taproot Wizards, etc. Bitcoiners like you and I don't want to have anything to do with the spam or its scammy promoters. And for this reason, we try to keep spam out of our nodes. Now, unfortunately, we have to accept spam that has already made its way into blocks. Otherwise, we fall out of consensus. But we certainly don't have to ex accept spam in our mempools. Mempool is just where every Bitcoin node stores transactions that have not yet been included in a block by a miner. There's no such thing as the mempool. Every single Bitcoin node has its own mempool, which is short for memory pools, you could guess. So we have this disconnect between miners and the mempools of non-mining nodes. Most mining pools are putting spam into blocks, but many mempools like mine try to exclude the spam, these spam transactions, and not send them along to other nodes. It's a weird situation when mining pools are including transactions that so many Bitcoin node runners hate. So how should this disconnect between mining and mempools be handled? In the past, it was always handled the same way. Bitcoin mining pools were expected to defer to Bitcoin node runners. Here's an example from Bitcoin Core in 2016. This is BIP 152 discussing compact blocks. The primary primary goal is reducing the bandwidth spikes at relay time, etc., etc. As a side effect, ordinary non-mining nodes like you and me will download and upload blocks faster if those blocks were produced by miners using similar transaction filtering policies. Oh, it looks like they're doing some filtering. It's not censorship back then. Everyone understood this. This means that a miner who produces a block with many transactions discouraged by your node will be relayed slower than one with only transactions already in your memory pool, in your mempool. And here's the emphasis. This is from Unhosted. And he was able to find this as part of his research. The overall effect, quote, the overall effect of such relay differences, in other words, differences in how nodes pass on transactions, on the network may result in blocks which include widely discouraged transactions, losing a stale block race, and therefore, and here's the conclusion, the important thing, therefore miners may wish to configure their node, their mining node, to take common relay policies into consideration. In other words, if they don't want to lose a block race, they should change their mempool and their filtering. Bitcoin Core in 2016 is telling mining pools that if they mine blocks that contain transactions that most nodes have never seen, because those transactions have never made their way through the node's mempools, then those mining pools risk missing out on winning a block when there's a race between two mining pools who found a block at the same time. In other words, and this is the really important part, mining pools are expected to conform to mempools and, or the mempools of non-mining nodes, I should say, and not put stuff in blocks that's not being widely relayed around the network by nodes, and certainly not put stuff in blocks that the nodes hate. That was Bitcoin Core's solution in 2016 to help to avoid orphan blocks and make the network run more smoothly. And now we're going to see what their solution is in 2025, which is unfortunately quite different. But I'll pause really briefly here before going on to ask you, if you're finding this video interesting so far, to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission, hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So this is how Bitcoin Core suggested solving this in 2016. Basically, the miners were expected to bend their wells to the node runners. Now let's take a look at how Bitcoin Core devs approach this in 2025. This is Gloria Zhao's comments of Bitcoin Core on this uh, policy to uncap data carrier. And she writes, another motivation is support Bitcoin's public decentralized market for block space by not making transaction relay policy stricter than what is reliably mined. In other words, miners come first and nodes are expected to bend their relay policy to make miners happy. And she mentions this in another tweet here. When transactions are reliably mined in blocks, disallowing them in default relay policy only serves to harm mempool utility and block block propagation. Beginning of this post says there have been a number of demands that Bitcoin Core use transaction relay policy to prevent certain kinds of transactions from being mined based on use case. Here's another Bitcoin Core dev who doesn't understand that the main 
and only use case of Bitcoin is as money. And as Giacomo points out in his response to her saying, there've been a number of demands that Bitcoin Core use transaction relay policy to prevent certain kinds of transactions from being mined based on use case. This doesn't seem correct. This is Giacomo's response. This doesn't seem correct. Bitcoin Core already uses transaction relay policy to increase friction to get mined for various for certain kinds of transactions. Preventing it is entirely obviously unfeasible, etc. The number of demands are for a core to keep it that way, either fixing an unintended loosening of policy shipped with Taproot or an intended one actively discussed now, the whole data carrier size and op return debate. So most Bitcoin core devs in 2025 expect Bitcoin node runners to make changes to their mempool policies to accommodate and defer to Bitcoin miners. This is the complete opposite of the Bitcoin core ethos in 2016, when miners instead were expected to defer to node runners and the network. Now, what explains this huge cultural shift in Bitcoin core and how it, it approaches spam and filtering? One explanation that I'm increasingly becoming convinced of is that a lot of Bitcoin core devs in 2025 are compromised. For example, why in the world are Bitcoiners still allowing a ship coiner like Jameson Lop anywhere near Bitcoin Core. He literally founded and runs a company that supports Ethereum. This is not what I want to see Bitcoin Core devs working on. He actively supports spam and Taproot Wizards. You can see here with this Taproot Wizard hat. Taproot Wizards are one of the worst offenders when it comes to putting spam on chain. And of course, they're funded by David, ba David Bailey, the crypto VC. And Jameson Lop is also invested in Citria, which we had to deal with uh, this whole debate over. This is really what kicked it off, this whole debate over op return size. So that's Jameson Lop. Then we have Peter Todd, who in this post is bragging that he got, got paid $5,000 to do some programming to make this uh, meme coin on Solana. This is a Bitcoin core dev doing this and getting paid on the side. And as Maple points out here, so you're telling me he's not bought and paid for, pay to play dev, he'll push whatever ship you put in front of him provided it's attached to a bag. This is Peter Todd, obviously a huge supporter of spam as well. So these are the kind of Bitcoin core devs we have. And maybe they were a lot better in the past, maybe they weren't. If, when you see things like this, it's not surprising to learn that Bitcoin core has sat idly on its hands for the past two years, in spite of the community asking for them to patch the inscriptions ha hack, but they've sat idly on their hands for the past two years as inscription spam has taken over and the UTXO set has exploded. They didn't care about the UTXO set exploding when it came to inscriptions spam, but they're so, so concerned that Citria might put a little bit of of naked pub keys in the blockchain. And this is part of their explanation for why node renders need to relay more spam and blow open the op return filter. Now they're actively returning that, uh, removing that filter in their next software update in October. So I think there's something seriously wrong going on here. And the burden of proof is not on us. The burden of proof is on Bitcoin core devs to explain to us why since 2023, they have deviated constantly and consistently from Bitcoin's core culture which has always been anti-spam, as I talk about in this video, which I'll link to in the description notes below. Bitcoin, everyone understands this. Everyone who came to Bitcoin for money understands this. Bitcoin is a monetary network and should not be used for non-monetary things like spam. Bitcoin is king. Things like Ethereum are a complete scam as well. And anyone who believes otherwise, people like Jameson Lop, should not be allowed anywhere near Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin core devs are, who are pro-spam or pro-ship coins like Lop and Peter Todd and others should be defunded and or driven out of town like we did to scammers like Roger Ver and Craig Wright. Why does a ship coiner like Lop, someone who wrecked his own customers by getting them into Ethereum right after the move to proof of stake, which anyone with half a brain could see was going to be a complete disaster, why do Bitcoiners, why do we Bitcoiners still let this guy anywhere near Bitcoin core? Anyone who's pro-shipcoin, pro-spam should not be working at Bitcoin Core, period. And again, this is not censorship. This is what a healthy Bitcoin culture has been doing for years, publicly shaming and driving out shipcoiners, scammers, and anyone else who wants to bloat the chain with non-monetary data. And this includes people who put on big Bitcoin conferences like David Bailey. I don't care if you're supporting meme coins, if you're supporting tokens on Bitcoin, and if you're doing all this stuff at your Asian Bitcoin conferences, that are even more full of ship coins. If you're funding companies like Taproot Wizards, I think people should boycott your magazine, boycott your conference, and stop listening to you, and treat you with the same respect that we now treat people like Craig Wright and Roger Ver. 
And here's another thing. If you donate to groups that fund Bitcoin Core, like OpenSats or Brink, for example, I think you should let them know how you feel about this if you agree with the position I'm taking here. And if you don't like the response, just stop donating. It's very easy to hit them where it hurts. If you're a Bitcoin Core dev who's anti-spam and anti-shipcoin and are as appalled by this turn of events as we are, I think now's the time to speak up publicly so we know that you can be trusted and so that we can find funding for you in the future if you need it. But at this point, my default assumption is that any Bitcoin Core devs who are still going along with this are either compromised in some way. Maybe they're being paid like Peter Todd. Maybe they have companies that want to make Bitcoin more like Ethereum because they support Ethereum like Jameson Law or they're just economically illiterate or ignorant of the history of Bitcoin culture. And if they're that, they shouldn't be working on Bitcoin Core either. These people belong really at a project like Ethereum or Solana instead. It looks like some of them like Peter Todd are gradually moving over to Solana because these people care nothing about the self-sovereignty of node runners. No one cares about road, node runners in the Ethereum ecosystem or the Solana ecosystem. This is what make, makes Bitcoin so unique. As for self-sovereign Bitcoiners, our mempools belong to us alone and we will never change them to make corrupt miners happy. The correct order of precedence is Bitcoin nodes above Bitcoin miners. And Bitcoin miners have a long history of doing stupid things. They need to be reined in by the Bitcoin nodes. Bitcoin node runners are the guardians of the network. And you have to ask yourself, why is this so difficult for the very people who are working on node software at Bitcoin Core to understand they're making Bitcoin node software, and yet they seem much more interested in pleasing companies like Citria, pleasing people like David Bailey, pleasing people like Jameson Lopp, who supports Ethereum. If you want to learn more about the self-sovereignty of your mempool and how it should be treated, I'll put a link to this in the description notes below, as well as if you want to join this movement and run Bitcoin Knots and tell Bitcoin Core to go you know where, I'll put a link to this video in the description notes below that teaches you how to run Bitcoin Knots. And especially if you look in the description notes here, you'll see lots of resources that will show you how to run Bitcoin Knots for free or how to build or buy a personal server that you can use to run Bitcoin Knots. And then I thought that Mechanic covered a lot of these issues really well in his latest video. So I'll put a link to that in the description notes below. Definitely worth listening to. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.